my workshop. A uh, bit of change of pace uh, today with today's video. Um, we're going to do a, a wood turning. Um, we're going to turn this log, this uh, oak log, uh, which is a beautiful piece of wood. It's a tree we cut down, uh, it's the same tree we cut down five, six years ago now. And uh, it's been lying around in my workshop, drying out. So uh, it should be uh, fine now to make a vase out of. I want to make a, uh, a tall um, vase. Not sure of the shape yet. We'll uh, see what's in the wood um, and machine around it. You know, you never know whether there's any sort of grub holes or whether there's a split in there. You know, it looks fine at the moment, uh, but you know, you, you never know until you start machining exactly what's inside. So we're going to make a vase. Um, with a piece of wood like this, it's pretty heavy um, and it's going to be spinning pretty fast. Um, so I don't particularly like getting it between centers um, because it, it will throw the lathe around a bit. So what I'm going to do is mount a face plate on the, the back of it and do most of the uh, machining um, with the face plate. So you start by getting the, the face plate uh, as much in the middle of the material as you can. I mean, you know, these logs are never perfectly round. Um, and in my case, it's on a little bit of a slant, so I'm going to have to pack up one side with a bit of material. And this looks as though it's going to be about right. To make this 90 degrees with the rest of the log so it doesn't wobble around too. set in the lowest speed okay because otherwise when you start your lathe up with your material in um, your lathe could end up walking across the workshop uh, another thing you should never do is when you have your face plate or your chuck for that matter with material in it you never offer the face plate or chuck up to the thread and then turn the machine on for it to wind onto the thread that is really asking for trouble so what you do you get a shifter put on the nut provided on the end of the shaft and turn it on by hand. Okay, so now we'll start getting some of this, uh, getting all this back off and uh, making a round cylinder um, and then we'll see where we go from there. roughing gouge because uh, this is particularly sort of hard wood and there's a lot of bark on it and um, I can remove quite a bit more uh, with this tool rather than the um, tool I was using which is a square end um, very nice tool actually uh, and these are tungsten carbide tips
you'll notice that the tool rest is set very wide um, for using this type of tool and you notice on the back of it uh, there's a flat area uh, which then uh, runs up in that area there so you actually need to get the flat area on the tool rest and the flat area stops the tool from rolling over uh, but it's quite controllable it's very 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 sharp and razor sharp uh, so it doesn't tend to bite into the wood and carry on down through uh, in actual fact when it does do that uh, it moves away from the material so the digging in process actually stops as opposed to these type tools if you try and cut with these type tools uh, standard type of uh, lathe to, uh, chisels um, when they when they catch they actually go in deeper and they can end up this can end up hitting you underneath the chin so um, that's why you you need the tool rest to be much further in like about uh, half an inch or less so you, uh, you, 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 you get much more control of the tool uh, and when you start cutting with the t these type of standard tools you, you start high like this so the, the, the wood doesn't actually meet the cutting surface and then you quietly bring it down till it starts cutting and then you can turn the tool uh, anti-clockwise to come this way clockwise to go that way and that's the way, the way you, in which you operate with these tools uh, <coughs> let me see what we got here this is a, a spindle gouge uh, and this is a bowl gouge you'll see that you know, the bowl gouge is much longer much tougher uh, a bigger larger build than a spindle gouge uh, they do a very similar job um, but obviously the bowl gouge is really made for hollowing out bowls uh, so you know you're a long way over the tool rest so you have a longer handle in which to control the chisel so now I'm going to make this carry on making this a round cylinder I think we can speed the lathe up a little bit too See how quick that this tool can get this uh, piece of log down to a near uh, round cylinder very quickly. So uh, that's why this tool is very good for that job. So uh, we'll continue. Okay, I've uh, just turned it and stopped it. Um, I've just discovered I've got a bit of a grub hole here. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to take it another three or four millimeter deeper. Uh, I didn't really want to, but uh, I'm going to try and get rid of that if I can. Uh, another one over here. It's not so deep. Oh well. tailstock out 
Um, got a bit of a crack there, but I don't think it's going to bother us too much. Um, but we have a lot of overhang here, so it's probably easier if I bore the inside out rather than try and cut it with this. The best tool I have found for boring the inside out of something like this is a force in a bit. So uh, I've got my shape that I want and I've bored the inside out. Um, now I'm going to finish the outside and cut it off. to the last stage of machining now and a lot of people ask me uh, when I'm doing a, a pot like this um, how do you separate it from the, the the stub that's left well this is how you how I do it and a, a lot of professionals do it this way as well uh, you machine uh, like layers out in the back uh, and if you notice there's a slight flat area here and then I undercut it inside there then so this is actually deeper in that direction than what this is. Uh, so then what you do, you get a saw uh, and you cut this off and then just get a bit of a grinder or whatever you fancy really, just to take this nub off that's left. But uh, basically that's how to machine a vase. Who'd have known that that beautiful little pot or vase was hiding in that piece of wood. Beautiful. So I hope you've liked the demonstration of wood turning today. If you go to the bottom left hand corner of the screen you'll find a little red box. Um, click on that, that will take you directly to my YouTube station uh, where you can see 
quite a few now wood turning um, videos. Uh, I also do a lot of uh, CNC router. In fact, uh, I do manufacture uh, CNC routers. Um, I've recently gone into 3D printing and 3D scanning because it's all related to uh, CNC machines and uh, I also do tuition on uh, programs to operate CNC machines, Mac 3, NC Studio and AppCam. Um, so please if you've liked today's uh, video from me, press like. Subscribe to my channel, that's a very good thing to do, and I hope you join me again next time. So, bye for now.